So let me summarize what you've done uh, until now, and then we can just uh, finish off today's chapter. So in essence, over the past couple of lectures, we've discussed fundamental is the concept of soul. So that was very important for us to understand this chapter of bondage and karma. It was essential to have a firm belief that Jains do believe in the concept of soul. Without it, it then it's kind of substanceless. There's nothing to hold on to. Uh, the second concept was the concept of permanence. So just as matter is indestructible and it's permanent, soul also is indestructible and permanent. Soul always existed, soul exists, and soul will always continue to exist. So that is fundamental. It cannot be destroyed, uh, even when we know that people, uh, birth and death occurs, but soul is always going to remain. So that was the other concept. And soul is a substance. It's an independent substance, just like matter is a substance. So just as a substance has got properties, so when we have gold uh, is a substance, silver is a substance, so matter has got a substance, the so substance has properties, so G is an independent substance and G has got certain properties. So and by that we mean bliss, intuition, knowledge, energy, these are all properties of, of the soul. Um, and then looking at uh, karma from a Jain point of view, we realize that Jain is the only philosophy, uh, as far as we know, in, in, in sort of the global religions, which says that karma is actually particles of matter. So that's quite unique to the Jain philosophy. And then the karma can be classified into two divisions, bhav karma and dravya karma. So dravya karma means particles of uh, karma, physical particles. And bhav karma is because the karmas get attached to the soul. And then the soul has got certain dispositions, greed, passions, so these are the kind of karmas which are coming out from the vibration of the soul. So they're both interlinked, but it's important to realize that whilst you have got particles of matter attaching to the soul, uh, and this you can realize very, it, it's very easy to understand this, if you look at light from science. Science says light, there's a duality of light. Light is particles of matter, and light can also be considered as waves. And both of them are separate matters. If you consider light as particles of matter, then all the physical laws of motion applies. You can say F is equal to MA, force is equal to mass time acceleration, it's a particle of matter. But then if you consider light as waves, then all these equations for motion does not apply to light. Then you have to look at E is equal to HF and all these kind of uh, particles of looking at light from, from a wave point of view. So the same substance light can look at it from two separate points of view and both have got equal applications. So just as we've got our mobile phones, we've got all the satellite communications, there are different ways of how light, light can be looked on. Some of them look at photons, which are particles of matter, and others look at light as just pure particles of wave. Same thing with karma. Karma is particles would be the dravya karma, and this kind of waves would be the bhav karma. And the bhav karma essentially means uh, karma associated with the soul. The other thing we look at is the eight types of karma in the Jain philosophy, uh, which are then broken down into gati and agati. And second is, every soul is an architect of their own destiny. It's a very, very firm belief that there is no concept of an almighty God, all-powerful God who is going to punish and reward us. Jainism does not believe in it, which is quite distinct and different from many of these, these philosophies of the world. That there is a God who is going to punish us, there is going to be some reward, there is someone else looking after who uh, uh, is going to do give reward or punishment. It's us who are architects of our own destiny, there is nothing else in us. And whatever we get, it's kind of nature. Karma is, is kind of nature. So there's no concept of anyone else who is in control of our destiny. So that's kind of looking at the past, what we've covered so far. So just again to summarize, karma, uh, dravya, and bhav. And then matter, if you look at it from a dravya point of view, then it's one of the eight types of karma, vargan. Vargan means group of particles. So a certain group of particles associated for certain uh, things. So if you have a a uh, group of particles associated with obscuring knowledge, then those are known as uh, Gnana Varnia Karma. So the Vargan. So there are eight different types of karma from this point of view. But if you look at it from a power point of view, then you've got feelings of attachment and hatred, passions. So this is what's causing this from a Dravya and Bhav. And essentially they're both intertwined. You can't say it's because of this, this occurs, or because of this, this occurs. Essentially they are both intertwined. Do stop me if you want any clarification. Oops, sorry, so I think some of these we have already looked in the past, so I'll actually skip those. <clears throat> okay, I think, so let me just start here. So we looked at 
This we covered last week. We looked at that when karma is attached to the soul, then every action of living organisms, it, uh, so karma is actually occurs, it's karma is action. And how do we find karmas? Through the activities of man, vachan, kaya, thought, speech, and body. And that's a cause of transcendental effect, either in this life or future lives. The word transcendental is because this cause and effect is something which you can't see. We can't actually determine what's causing this, oh, karma has been bound into my soul, this is the effect, it's good. So it's a reality, but it's a reality which you can't see. And that's the reason why I use the word transcendental. You can't essentially prove it through empirical means. Ah, I'm a keru to eklaar a cause and effect hase. So, but it's a reality. It's not a figment of imagination. It, it, it's not that. Uh, and so when karma is actually bound to the soul, then four things have occurred. Prakriti, type of nature, stiti, duration, anubhat, which is intensity, and pradesh, which is quantity of numerical, numerical strength. And again, we then looked at an example uh, last week that when, if you look at, for example, the intensity, there are four types of intensity. And we said that, and the example given is that, so for example, you've got a pool of water, and then you've got a stick, and if you actually just draw a line, then that line essentially will just get covered up straight away as soon as you draw the line. But if you actually draw a line on a, on a piece of stone, and you took a metal bar, and you, and you literally etched a, a mark there, then that mark is not going to go away very easily. So those are very high intensity karmas. So, the, so again, the example given here is some stick touching the soul, like a needle touching the piece of iron. So there's an iron, there's a needle here, and with any movement, the needle is just going to fall off. So those kind of karmas are very light karmas. The, a needle is on, on a piece of iron. Some stick to the soul as tightly as a needle bound to iron with a band. So imagine there's a needle, and there is an iron, and you've taken a rubber band or a cloth, and you've tied it. But with any movement, suddenly, then that needle will actually fall off. So these are slightly harder bound. Then some stick to the soul with more rigidity, like needle hammered to the iron. So now, actually you've got a piece of metal and you take a nail and you just hammer it down. That's going to take a lot of effort to actually remove this. So you actually have those hammers, which actually let chair and then you can remove it. So that's going to require lots of effort. And some are fused with the soul, like needle and iron melted together. So those are, are very, very difficult to get rid of. Sorry? Can the last one be um, removed in one lifetime? Essentially, um, what we believe is that we come through infinite times of birth and uh, we also going to have through many life births. But essentially what happens is that when you say can it be one life birth, if this is going to be your final birth and that means you're going to go into liberation, then obviously it means that all the karmas which attach to your soul have to be eliminated. So it is possible. But that you and I wouldn't know unless a Kevil Gnani will be able to know that yes, you've got certain amounts of karmas and uh, those karmas can then actually be discarded in one lifetime. But sometimes you have to go through many lifetimes. But that all really depends on how close you are to, to, to your liberation. Uh, and then again, that's also a very uh, complex subject. I'm not an expert in it. There's a concept which is called a samudka. And uh, that's actually a research topic which one of the Shamitis is doing at SOAS right now. And in a nutshell, what she's trying to say is, if this is your final birth, but the amount of karmas in your soul are much more, then, so that means how do you get rid of those karmas? Because now you know that after your death, you have to go to liberation. So the concept is just as you got a piece of cloth, and the, uh, you've just washed it, and then to dry it, you're actually going to then expand the piece of cloth, so then it actually, the surface area is more, so then the cloth is going to get dry. So there's a concept whereby the soul then can actually expand in the entire universe. So right now the soul is within our body. But then the soul can actually come out and expand and therefore all the karmas attached to the soul in one way can then actually just disseminate. It's a very complex uh, theory and how that occurs, again, because you cannot prove it, but, but so, so it is possible to get rid of your karmas in one lifetime. Another, another example of this uh, prakriti, stiti, duration, and aban. So this, let's imagine the different kinds of larvas. Methina larva, churmana larva, and sutna larva. <laughs> so the nature, so each of these larvas have got this particular nature. Our methina larva, the kathraya, is matasara. Churmana larva, protein. And sutna larva, cold nefluquem. Sut is, is ginger now, and it's very good. So as you can see, larvas are larvas, karmas are karmas, but each of these can have a different kind of nature. This has got the nature of arthritis, so karmas are karmas, but then karmas can have different nature. None, some obscure knowledge, some obscure faith, some, uh, you know, vednyagi pain. Uh, so the prakruti, the types of karmas. 
Then you can say stick your duration. Now food sell by date. Methina ladu can stay for a sort of long time. But Chumana ladu, oh, if you keep that for about a month or two months, they'll actually uh, not become fugi body yasa, okay, they, they'll not last. And Sutna ladu, so depending on that. So each of these ladus, even their ladwas, but they can have their own duration, the, the, the stiti. Now the rasin intensity. I mean, imagine a methina ladu she just put a little bit of methi in his oh, kadu she. Like, 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 can you imagine that just very little methi was put in? But imagine if, if they made this methane ladu with sackfuls of methi, would you be able to eat those methane ladus? No way, because it's going to be too kadu to have. So the intensity is, is, is depends on how much methi you put in. Churan uh, ladu bhavta hoi, you'll actually have lots of them. And sutna ladu, you'll have a sort of handful of them. So depending on the jipru bhavati, intensity is, 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 is different. And then quantity, how much will you have methane ladu? Uh, so churan ladu to badane bhavi, you'll have quite a few of handful. Methina ladu, relatively handful. So, how much potential? So, let's just have one or two. And Sutna ladu, just a handful of them. So, the quantity you're going to have depending on the, the, the step. So, you can have prakruti, stiti, uh, uh, intensity, and quantity. So, you can just get an analogy of how, how this works with the karma. The other example, again, I gave last week was, for example, the difference between intensity and quantity. So, you can have, say, 10 kilos of cotton. If you put it on your, on your lap, that's fine, okay, it's 10 kilos. It's like a virgin market suitcase in gym. But can you imagine a one gram of thorn, just a, a one gram of thorn just itself, how much pain will that give you? So 10 kilograms of cotton will not give you that much pain. Its quantity is much more, but the intensity of that pain is going to be much lighter compared to just that one or two grams of thorn. Very small, that quantity, but the intensity of the pain is going to give you much, much more. We looked at this. Uh, this essentially is the roadmap of karma. Essentially, so um, it's almost summarizing the entire chapter. Uh, the black de denotes the karmic matter encapsulating the soul. Then you have got the ashram, the influx of karma, and these are the five reasons which cause it. And the glue, which with by which the karmas attach the soul, that's actually the glue, which is the attachment and aversion, which is then causing us to transmigrate between the four uh, gatis. And then those green dots signify that through some Yabdarshan Gnan Charitra, we can then actually uh, get uh, into moksha uh, in the Sitchila. <coughs> Whilst on this point here, uh, I actually then demonstrated last week that the concept of karma and soul, how do the karmas get to the soul? And again, one actually then starts wondering that if the Sitchila is actually of a finite dimension. So in the scriptures it says, the Sitchila Akrutche. But then James also say that infinite souls can get into that into that uh, uh, sitchila. Then it makes you wonder how can you have so after our room check we have say 50, 40 people, 50 people. Can you imagine 100 people here? And then you can imagine thousand, million, a billion people. Can the entire Earth's population fit into this room? You'll say that's almost next to impossible. But in that case, then how is it possible that all these infinite souls can then just reside within 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 the sitchila? Because we believe that the infinite souls in Sitchila, infinite souls will even get to Sitchila. So essentially, it's just in a, and the space of uh, Sitchila is not is not uh, limitless. Uh, it's when you look at the Jain universe, it's a very finite dimension of, of, of the Sitchila. And the reason is that soul is not it's it's not like a body. And essentially, what happens is that something which is uh, it does not have any, any body, you can have an independent existence and you can overlay with one another. <coughs> and a classic example is, so for example, a lady is pregnant. Same kind of location, but two souls. So if you then extend that, that you can have, because it's a soul, you can have a small point, just like a small dot. And within this, you can actually have infinite souls. And if you saw, uh, last time there were circles. So if you look at a circle, I can put another circle, another circle, another circle. You can keep on superimposing on that same circle, the independent circles. But if I remove it, then you can say, ah, these are all independent entities. So within one space, just even a minute dot, it's possible to have infinite amount of uh, substances. Yeah, and so this is the example I was saying. I think it's not currently going to work today. Yeah, okay, so that's not working. So essentially what I demonstrated was that you could have this one circle 
and then like in PowerPoint, I can take copies of this circle and then I can actually superimpose the same circle on the same circle so you can actually see that I can have blue colored, green colored, red colored, all these different circles but superimposed, they all occupy the same space but so it's not expanding more but just on the same space you can have so many entities and they're yet separate and distinct and, uh, entities so that's why it's called soul's involvement with the karma is merely as an association ek kshetra avagra so ajay mane soul uh, when the karmas are binding to my soul what's happening is that two separate entities karma is matter and i my soul but essentially the, when the karma is bound they are now occupying the same space ke okay, maru je soul nu je space je che and the karmas are, are together they're not fusing they're independent entities and the soul and the karma has become one like milk and water but then i can then separate them out so if the karma gets out then my soul is separate and the karma is separate but when they are together then is actually one chakra one they occupy the same locus i think we looked at this last week we also looked at this last week uh um, we also looked at this last week the king of all the karmas is mohinya karma Uh, and when we look at it, uh, what Mohinya causes, it causes uh, Darshana Mohinya, which is inside the union, uh, and then Kanda uh, uh, Charitra Mohinya, which is Kanda Ki union. So, so Charitra Mohinya, which is actually so Charitra means Kanda, and Mohinya means, uh, and that's actually mainly caused by Kashai, which is called Rag and Dwej. Uh, attachment and hatred and that's why apna ma these words are very very common apna bhagwan ne pan ke vitra ra apna bhagwan vitra ko okay so attachment without the attachment and generally ra is caused uh, that the two branches of attachment are deceitful manipulation and lo and for hatred is crow and man so in charitra karma which uh, charitra mohinya karma so what happens is we look at passions are the main reason and then there is something which is called as uh, loka shais which are sub, uh, subsidiary of the major kashais now persist until traces of major ones are not rooted out hasya laughter rati arati shok bhay jugupsa and carnal instincts so these are some of the sub categories of passions it makes you wonder hasya is actually say the okay, laughter is actually good many of the people say so it makes you want to look at acharya shri she is a smiling face there so how does it mean how can hasya laughter be wrong by laughter what it means is that kind of vicious laughter you know uh, when when people are, are sort of in a very uh, ha 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 kind of kind of uh, look and evilish kind of laughter yes i'm going to do something bad so that's essentially what is meant by hasya or, or people in sort of uh, pubs just smiling and laughing and just without any purposeless uh, laughter but it's not out of joy rati and arati now apne jare pratikraman karta hoye che how many people know the sat lakh sutra so sat lakh sutra ma ave che so sat lakh sutra comes uh, within the pratikraman when, when when we do pratikraman and within that do you know why the 15 is written there 15 so what do we say pehle pranatipad bije मृषावाद सो इफ यू वेंट ऑन पहले प्रांतिवाद ये मृषावाद की जड़तदान चौथे मेवतुन पांचवे परिग्रह छठे क्रोध सातवें मान आठवें माया नौ में लोभ दसवें राग ग्यारह में द्वेष बारह में कलह तेरह में अव्याख्यान चौदह में पेशनीय पंद्रह में रति और रति सोलह में पर परिवाद सत्रह में मृषावाद सो रति है ना रति रति मींस प्लेजर इन सेंस एक्टिविटीज समटाइम्स वी हैव अ प्लेजर not in spiritual activities but pleasure in actually sensual activities things which are against the welfare of the soul so i'm 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 enjoying doing things not conducive for the soul i'm i'm enjoying doing things so for example oh yeah people actually enjoy hunting i'm enjoy so if i'm a hunter i like going mm-hmm. and hunting animals and i'm deriving pleasure out of it but is that conducive for my soul i'm actually hurting other animals fishing as a great pastime cuz i like to say people enjoy fishing so that's and then other is the opposite non pleasure in spiritual activities ओ मने अपने फ्राइडे क्लास में कोने मजा आ जाए फ्राइडे आफ्टर लॉन्ग डे वीक आई राधर गो सिट इन द पब राधर देन कम टू द टू द जेन क्लास सो नॉन प्लेजर इन स्पिरिचुअल सो यू हैव अ प्लेजर इन सो अरति मींस नॉन प्लेजर इन स्पिरिचुअल एक्टिविटीज यू एंजॉय थिंग्स व्हिच आर नॉट कंडूसिव टू द सोल सो डू यू सी द डिफरेंस हियर सो आई एंजॉय प्लेजर इन सेंस एक्टिविटीज एंड अरति मींस नॉन प्लेजर इन स्पिरिचुअल एक्टिविटीज 
Okay, spiritual activities are something some you're supposed to enjoy, but you don't. Ah, I don't like anything spiritual. They come to nothing, man. Just don't enjoy. So non-pleasure spiritual activities, rati and arati. So by jubupsa and carnal instincts. Now some of these things are, are quite sort of pertinent and quite uh, relevant now. If you look at the society we are staying right now, compared to even our, our childhood, there's so many things which have occurred or changed over the past. 20, 30, 50, 100 years. I mean, look, look at it right now, gay marriages, single sex, uh, or you know, people, people sort of male feeling, behaving as though they are females, and there's so many other things like even the Church of England has to then come up saying, do we, can we have this kind of priests and single sex marriage, double sex, stribet, kumbet, uh, so male, female, and for a life. And some of these things are all instincts. Essentially what Jainism says, that these are all instincts. And can you imagine that no matter what inclination you have, but they are beyond this. That essentially the whole aim is, I want to get beyond all these instincts here, I want to get rid of this body, whatever inclination I have, and then you want to purify your soul. So essentially, what it says is that there's a constant balance between no kashites, which is all these things here, and spiritual advancement. It's almost like a seesaw balance. How can you achieve that balance? So modern psychology says that the emotions, fear, anger, happiness, sorrow, love, hatred, sort of drives the entire human behavior. And uh, so, and, and then what science will say, you want to raise a fist, then you're angry, uh, and then, uh, yeah, the muscular system will then uh, uh, sort of, okay, I'm angry, so I want to hit someone, and then you will actually do the action. Jainism says that, yes, that's true, that's physical, but essentially chemical transformations in physical activities but from a karmic point of view, fear is not produced by circumstances, but fear is aroused by circumstances. Essentially, when, I, when you have all these emotions here, it's not produced by circumstances, it actually becomes a conducive factor. And there are some brave souls, when certain circumstances occur, then they'll still not be phased out. And if you look at Acharya Channaji, when she started Virayatan, there were immense amount of problems, and especially when she went to Bihar, she had to come across many fearful situations whereby normal people would say, oh, say okay, there's no point to me doing, but Ajay she went beyond the circumstances, uh, and when they want to do good, the, the soul wants is a sort of unconditional love, then it's, although it's aroused by circumstances, but they are beyond it. So fear which was dormant is awakened. So circumstances will actually create fear, uh, but it's actually, create, uh, it's not produced, but it's actually aroused. And then we see, fear, essentially we then can, tied down to karmic effect. Fear not only causes physical and mental transformations, but also accumulates more karma futgal which gives support to moho delusion. That's a very important point. Sometimes when you get into grief, we, we lose a loved ones or a, a, some, something happens. When we have this kind of uh, negative emotions, then they are actually self-fulfilling. So you get those emotions, you behave in a certain way, and, that's, and when you behave in a certain way, then you're actually attracting more karmic matter. So you're, it's almost like a plane near turbulence. When turbulence occurs, if you're not able to balance a plane, then it's just more and more, you just, it's, just, it's, a self it's like a roller coaster. So the whole idea is how can you then come back to equilibrium, how can you balance it out? So Mohindya karma is called the king of the karmas. However, can't claim Mohindya came first and others followed suit. So there is no kind of causal, uh, causality. However, it's true that no other karmas can be completely eliminated until the deleting karmas remain. So until this Mohinya karma remains, none of the other karmas can actually get, uh, uh, get you can eradicate. So that's why Mohinya karma is supposed to be the king of all karmas. Let's take an example. Let's look at the Roman Empire in the Middle Ages. And we all know that the Roman Empire actually failed, fell. And what is the root cause of the Roman Empire? It wasn't that the Russians or some mighty army came and said, okay, now let's get rid of the Roman Empire. The central Roman state collapsed because the migrants forcibly stripped it of the tax base which it had used to fund its armies. So that when the migrants came in, they said, we just don't want to pay taxes. And just because the Roman Empire could not get the taxes, then it could not sort of fund its, its army, the whole empire just collapsed. So a simple thing of not able to collect taxes caused the fall of the entire Roman Empire. So one thing is rooted out, then the entire empire collapses. Same thing, Mohenia karma is actually removed, all the other karmas will just fall like a pack of cards. So, so it's, it's, like, it's like the root. 
Although each type of karma is materially and operationally independent, there is some sort of reliance on defilement. So there are all kind of some linkages between one of them. So for example, when, when you want to make a cake, you'll have flour, you'll have baking soda, you'll have all these other things. Each of them are separate substances, but together they all have a different effect. So, so they some so okay. So, so essentially, different karmas, but there's some kind of interplay of of, kar, of, of karmas. Okay, so Mohinya karma. So let's understand the Mohinya karma, which is the king of all the karmas. So there are two types of Mohinya karma: darshan and charitra. Darshan means distorts enlightened faith. Darshan. Darshan does not mean to see here. Darshan has got the meaning of faith. And charitra distorts conduct and attitude of soul. So that's a conduct. So when you look at darshan, then it's samyaktva. So the right belief, you don't, you don't have that. You actually have the mithyatva. So it, it causes mithyatva it, and then it, it prevents samyaktva from occurring. And misra means mixture of both. Some people have some right faith and some wrong faith. So I'm not too sure. So misra. And then charitra, they are the kashais. And the four types of kashais and the 16 types of their subtypes of kashais. And then the no kashais, which are the nine types of hasya, rati, harati. So if you look at it, nine plus four is uh, uh, sort of uh, four types further divided into 16. There are 16 types of, uh, of, of, of the kashais. No kashais, they are nine. So 16 plus nine is 25 and three, 28. So Mohinya karma has got 28 different categories of, 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 of actions which actually cause Mohinya karma. So these are the different uh, activities or things which actually would cause the Mohinya karma. So then again, just to give you graphically, we looked at classification of karma, Gati karma and Agati karma. Then Gati karma is broken down into four, Nana Varnia, Darshana Varnia, Mohinya and Antrai. And then Agati karma is into Nam, Gotra, Ayushya and Vaitnya. And you can see Mohinya karma has got 28 uh, different types of categories of what causes Mohinya karma. And uh, we look at some of the other ones. So, so if you say Gnana Varanya karma and uh, Darshana Varanya karma, so the key word is Avaraniya. And Avaran means actually a way. Like I just went, sort of then they have the way or like a net which is obscuring. So when you have gnan knowledge and something which obscures knowledge, that's called avaran. So when you have uh, darshan, faith, and something which is obscuring your faith, so that's an avaran. So those are called gnana varanya and darshana varanya karma. So essentially what it says, our soul has got infinite knowledge, our soul has got infinite faith, but something is then covering it up, envel enveloping it. And that's the gnana varanya, the karmas enveloping, covering uh, uh, this. So that's why some kids are very bright, some kids are a bit dull. So all this can be explained that, okay, he's very clever, he's a genius, he's a little bit slow at learning. Essentially, it's all the degree of how much Gnana Varanya Karmas are covering the, the soul. Darshana Varanya Karma, perception of screen. Gnan. Now, when you know Gnan Hoi, so for example, if there's a medical doctor, he says, if I touch a hot plate, then what's going to happen? Some signals are going to go in, then my neurons in my brain are going to get that signal that I've touched something something hot, and then it's going to send a, uh, uh, a message back to my arm, ah, lift up your hand. So that's gnan. What's perception? Perception means, even if you've got a small child, the moment you touch a hot plate, I don't need any knowledge to know that, ah, this is hot, and I'm going to remove my hand. Perception, I'm just perceiving this. I don't require any knowledge for this to happen. So that's kind of perception. So knowledge and perception are slightly, are slightly uh, 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 sort of different. So when you look at none, uh, we'll actually the next slide will actually be slightly uh, explain what are the different types of knowledge. So Jainism says there are five different types of no, uh, 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 knowledge, and and these five are actually obscured by the Gnana Varanya Karma, and then Darshana Varanya we look at we look look at uh, those. <coughs> so Gnana Varanya Karma. Matignan. So these are the five different types of Gnana Varanya Karma. So these uh, karmas obscure knowledge. And which are the five types of knowledge which Jainism believes? These are the five <coughs> types of knowledge. Matignan. Mat knowledge of senses and mind. Any knowledge which you get through touch, taste, smell, hearing, that's all Matignan. And, and through the mind. So we process all this information you get. So that's Matignan. Shuddhagnan is kind of people 
describes with a scriptural knowledge, but it's actually slightly a bit, little bit more than scriptural knowledge. It's kind of verbal communication, even through signal. I could be doing a signal here, and I can I, I can pass on some information to you. Uh, uh, to you, uh, uh, plants might be secreting some chemicals uh, uh, under the roots and passing on the message to other trees. So that's kind of uh, 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 communication knowledge. So that's kind of shuddha Anything which be able to communicate knowledge is shuddha gnan. gnan is transcendental knowledge of material things. Knowledge of things and activities beyond what you can see through mind and senses. So if you are able to see something half a mile away, something which is occurring to your home, something which is occurring in the next, uh, in the other continent, anything which you can perceive, and there are stories of people in India and others who can say, ah, tamani pase jaso, you can actually visualize, oh, tamara garma amche, there's a bridge like on, next to your house. So when you are able to sense things beyond us, your, your, your confinement, so that's Adhikna. Madha Pregna is understanding people's thoughts processes. So you can understand what's actually going into your mind. You're thinking of a car. Okay, which car are you thinking of? So you can actually then start processing your, what's your mental thoughts process. And then Kevelgnan is the ultimate knowledge, knowledge of all things of, uh, at all times. Knowledge of the past, present, and the future. So that's ultimate. So all of the Tirthankas, when they, you remove all your karmas, that essentially is Kevelgnan. And once you get Kevelgnan, then you're going into to moksha. Yeah. Can I ask, uh, what about people using magic? No, I don't know, illusions and things like that to fool other people. Are no. they um, are they extracting karmas or is it just part of entertainment? How does how does it come in? I mean, so in, in what context? In, in context so like of they would blame uh, the. I mean, that's an activity. So I mean, uh, so if you're he's doing it for entertainment. He's not. Is it malicious intent? Is he, is he trying to do something wrong? If, he, if it's like an entertainment, that's another activity. It's like anything, like going to movies or going to something else. So these people are using magic or illusion uh, to, 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 to entertain people. So that's, it's, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's an activity. So is it a spiritual activity? It's not a spiritual activity. It's just like another normal activity. So you, know, you would go for a movie and, and, and sort of entertain yourself. So it really depends on, on what's the context of why they're doing this. If he's going to do this and say, okay, I want to now really hypnotize all of you here so that I can now start robbing you and doing that, so that's malicious. So that all, the karmic issue is very, very different because what can sometimes happen is, I could be standing here, but you, my thoughts could be somewhere else. So outwardly you might think, oh, wow, he's such a great person doing such a great thing. But what's behind the scene, what's in the mental attitude, mental disposition, you just do not know how the karma affects. So it's, it's beyond what you can see through your eyes. Oh, mm -hmm. how, 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 so, when we see that this person is doing certain activity, but what's the intention, what's the look, that all really depends. It's all, it's quite deep. So if I'm watching somebody do magic and I'm getting disturbed, then is that my karma that's affecting me or should I, is it that person? I don't know, because I chose to be in that room. I think eventually, I think it depends on your power of your soul. And if you look at, uh, uh, I mean, okay, this is an example of magic, yeah. and I don't know how much relevance it has for today. Yeah. But if you, if you look at Acharya Shri, when there are other activities happening around the world, what they tend to do is that you need to be much more strong and powerful yourself internally and not be affected by out, outward, uh, whatever happens out, outwardly. That's the ultimate sort of goal to happen. Not that all of us can get to that stage. So that's the ultimate equanimity. Okay. Irrespective of what are the external circumstances, can I maintain my, my e e e equilibrium? Am I not phased? Am I not being affected by uh, outward circumstances? So that's the utopian way to get to. And then how far you're along that, uh, that, that stage really depends on the uh, power of your soul. I mean, uh, let's put it to an extreme case here. Acharan Sutra I forget the actual slow, but what it says is, if someone's going to be giving you so much praise as sandalwood paste, oh, you're the great like emperor type, or you're going to be cut through a, a chisel, can you be able to maintain your equanimity? I mean, you and I, as a normal person, cannot. If someone even I'll be screaming, I'll be fear. But but there is actually a very strong case of Gach uh, and uh, our scriptures my And it's a fascinating story. Uh, the ultimate was uh, he was actually because of some uh, anger, his father-in-law then actually put a, a, a sort of a coal on his head and lit fire because he hid. And I think the story goes that. Uh, he married to, to uh, Gatsukumal married the person's daughter and then eventually then decided I want to now actually become a monk. So the, 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 the father-in-law became very outraged. How could you sort of mess around with my daughter? Mm -hmm. 
And after he became a monk, then the, 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 the father-in-law, to do revenge, put some sort of coal on his good Kumal's head and lit, lit, lit fire. And in that stage, uh, he, he was a monk. Can you imagine the, the pain, like with the, with the burning coal on your, on your face? But he was in such an economic state that it is said that he actually then went into moksha. So not only did he go to Devlok anything, that was his final life. And in that state of utter pain, he actually went into, uh, into, into moksha. So, so in, in that extreme pain, so most of us will not be able to do that. But if you look at, uh, so that's actually the, the gradation of how strong you are. Am I answering your question? Yeah. yeah. The external circumstances can occur, whatever it is, whether it's a magician, whether it's an illusion. Yeah. If you look at the magician, it's also other examples are given. I think Uttara Dhyan Sutrama Panaveche, for example, there are a lot of stories which are given in the scriptures which says that sometimes in those olden days, they and babies used to come on earth and actually come and give you some testing period. Okay? If someone says, or if someone praises you, oh, you are very good in your spiritual advancement, then some devlok will say, I don't believe that you can do it. Then the, the, the angelic forces will come and test you. So imagine you're going on a ship, and then someone then creates these huge waves. Mm -hmm. and I mean, if examples are which So a lot of people are scared, oh, okay, chala, but, kar, ulu kare. but people are very firm in their faith. They'll say, jay, thawanu, jay, thawanu, jay. if I have to die, I'll die. And they're in a very equilibrium, equilibrium state of mind. And they'll say, jay, thai. and then the dev, devis realize that this person is so firm in their faith, nothing is affecting them, and then they subside to those events. So just to prove the point, external circumstances could be whatever. It yeah. really depends on how firm and how balanced you are. Okay, so Darshana Varanya Karma, uh, I'll look in there only some subcategories of this Darshana Varanya Karma. Antrai Karma. Uh, antrai is hindrance karma. So Antrai, it's also a kind of Gujarati word, limits the energy of the soul. That's a real word of the Antrai. Okay, it's limiting the energy because we know our soul has got infinite energy. And an example is when you have an electric circuit, the voltage is passing through and then you have a resistance. Uh, so the and if you look at what's what's the formula, power is equal to v squared over r. So what it means, greater the resistance, lower the power. So that even happens in electric circuits, that p is equal to v squared r. So the what that kind of resistance so your power your power is going to diminish. Same thing here, the more the resistance you have, the more the karmic baggage you have, the you less the power of you. The jekru tamar antray karma samara mahala akpaala tamne. The power of your soul is going to be diminished. So the popular convention also considers certain worldly frustrations to be the effects of antrai karma. Antrai means obstacle. Anything you want to do, and oh, I want to go for a pilgrimage. Oh, I just fell over and I tripped and I, I, I got a fracture. So then antrai aviyu. So any good activities or bad activities, something which is going to hinder. Uh, <coughs> so what are the main subcategories of antrai? Dan antrai. So, I want to give some uh, uh, gift something, but I'm going to try it you. Bhog and try. Hindrance to enjoyment. Sort of a classic example. If you look at the Las Vegas, there is this Lin, who is actually a billionaire, but he's actually blind in his eyes. So, he's got all these casinos, hotels, and everything, but since birth, he's actually a blind person. So, that's one of the things. Okay? I've got all this wealth, but yet I just don't have this uh, untry of, 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 of seeing what, what, my, what wealth I have. Bhog and Upbhog also comes quite frequently in Mandi to Sutrama Panaveche. So, Upabhog means anything which has got repeated enjoyment. So, anything which you can use repeatedly. Clothes we can use repeatedly. House we can use repeatedly. And Bhog means like one off. So, that's kind of Bhog and Upabhog. Upbhog, hindrance to repeated enjoyment. You got a palatial house, house of Ubadiq, so that's oh, oh uh, uh, and like, and that means I cannot enjoy. And enjoy this uh, antraya video. Love and try. Hindrance to obtaining something. You can have all the great qualifications in the world, but then you've done hundreds of job applications and you can't get a job. So love and try. I was but I put everything perfectly, all, all everything is fine, but something is just not happening. I, I can't get certain things. So you know what's a antraya like people say okay, wear this color ring or something is like what do you say about that? You see, I think there are lots of things people believe in. Astrologers, people believe in all, all these things. And I think, I mean, 
I mean, if I draw even on, on my own grandfather, you know, my, my grandmom was very much so, black color, na perai, na perai. But there are certain people who believe, I don't care what it is. There are so many different things which are people. So, but people who have got a pure say, look, no karmantra bolu jo, that's it, nothing's going to affect me. So people have, have got such a firm faith, ke, ke, I don't believe in all this kind of stuff. There could be certain things, true or false, I'm not here to dispute. I think it all depends on people's faith. But people who are, if you look at sadhvijis and everything, they do everything at all the time and nothing affects them. If I'm going to do something with a pure heart, if I'm going to do, do, do with, with the blessings of, of gurus and with your prayers, then I'm, I'm happy to do whatever. So not colors and this and this, that does, doesn't make any difference. Okay. It's just a, say, it's just a saying, you're saying? I, I think it's a belief. I mean, uh, as I, but I, in, in technical sense, I mean, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not a qualified person to, yeah. to, to, no, no, to say that, but, but that's my belief. So my belief is that I would sort of say with a pure heart, uh, I, I, nothing sort of sh should affect. I wouldn't want to go to an astrologer to say a suit because if I would just say that if, if, if something's going to happen, if, if you if you have an astrologer, you're going to tell me this is going to happen, what, what do I care? Because if, if karma is I might as well then look at my advance myself spiritually and, and rather than saying, oh, I am karun, uli, ulu karun, am karun, and, and then going to the wrong angle from, from the astrology point of view. Either the astrology is going to be right or it's going to be wrong. If it's going to be right, big deal. Then it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So I might as well then look at it from a spiritual point of view. And also the astrologer is human being, isn't he? So he has limitations of his own abilities. Yeah. But if, if you have something that gives you, say, you know, like like a child will have a safety blanket. So just something like that, if that gives you comfort, comfort and it calms your mind down and stops you from burning karma, is there any harm in that? Or are you putting attachment on that thing that's giving you comfort? I, I think to give a very simple example to this, so when people follow rituals, mm -hmm. or people do different things like taking comfort, everyone is at a different stage of the spiritual development. So for example, so when I realized that you have to like, I mean, I'm not saying whether rituals are right or rituals are wrong, because again, within the Jains, there's Tanakwasi, there's Deravasi, and there are, there are different sects. And as you can see, the emphasis is Deravasi do lots of rituals, Tanakwasi do not believe in idol worship, they do, they just believe in the power of the soul and, and more pure meditation. But the pros and cons arguments goes is like, so for example, if you're doing rituals, you, when you're a baby, you're playing with dolls, mm -hmm. and you're playing with toy cars. As you grew older, are you still going to be playing with toys, toys and dolls. No, you now evolved yourself and now you've latched onto something else. So essentially what it means, if I need some things to latch onto, and if I'm at this stage of my spiritual development, it's fine to latch onto that. It's up to you. If you have developed spiritually further, you can even let go of that and then just move on. So this answer, it really depends on each individual person, what stage of your spiritual development you are. If you need to latch onto something, feel free and latch onto something. But as long as you are sort of growing, growing spiritually and you're not doing any harm. If someone says, ke astrologer, ke, tamne problem thio che, I think you need to go and kill five goats, sacrifice both, havan karo dhan, havan. So then you will say, ke, ke, no matter what you say, ke, that does, but that's quite true because in olden days that's what used to happen. The sacrifices, if you look at the Inca culture and all this, uh, uh, with a, the sacrifice was a big part of anything. Let's appease the gods and by appeasing the gods by sacrificing. Get, get, get a human or get some animals and let's sacrifice them. I mean, I think I mentioned in the, my last or the previous lecture, when I went to Kolkata, I was shocked. Ke Mataji no Mandir ma, they were actually sacrificing goats. I went two steps in and I just then get away. I said, no matter which Mataji this is, I cannot go and enter to, into this temple. It was that October period, Durga, Matani, Loka, Lukare, and they were actually sacrificing goats there. And in, in the name of religion. I mean, you heard all these stories, but when you heard, you were literally having those goats mm. here. So if that's in the religious name, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, uh, but that's that's not right. <clears throat> so as I said, so in, in conclusion, rituals and everything you need it, it really depends on what stage you are and then you just keep on evolving. <clears throat> um, karma, Gati and Agati, Gati karmas, we looked at it, the example given was like a Mercedes car, uh, uh, it had, a right, uh, it had a major accident, it was written off, almost similar to what Prince Philip had, <laughs> written off Range Rover. <laughs> so you, you, you can't recognize that this was a car. So the, 
ઘાતી કર્મસ અફેક્ટ ધ સોલ ઇન સચ અ વે કે સોલ ને પોતપોતાનો ખબર જ ના પડે ઇટ્સ ઇટ્સ અફેક્ટિંગ ધ સોલ ઇન અ વેરી વેરી સીરિયસ મેનર સો વેન યુ હેડ અ રાઈટ ઓફ કાર યુ કેન ઇવન ડિસ્ટિંગ્વિશ કે આ મર્સિડીસ કાર છે યુ કેન ધેર ઇઝ નો સિમ્બલ નથિંગ ઇન ટુ ઇટ ઓલ ઘાતી કર્મસ ધે અફેક્ટ ઓન ધ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ ધ બોડી લેવલ ઇટ ઇટ ડઝ નોટ ઇટ્સ ડઝ નોટ અફેક્ટ ધ સોલ ઇન 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 સોર્ટ ઓફ ઇટ્સ ગોટ મોર ઇફેક્ટ ઓન ધ ઓન ધ બોડી એન્ડ ઘાતી કર્મસ ઇઝ મોર ઓન ધ સોલ અ ઘાતી કર્મસ નામ કર્મ સો નામ કર્મ આપણે થાય સો દેટ્સ ધ ડેસ્ટિની વિચ ગતિ વી ગેટ ઇનટુ જાતિ વિચ સ્પીશીઝ શરીર સો ધીસ નામ કર્મ આર ડિટરમિન વિચ ડેસ્ટિની વેર આર યુ ગોઇંગ ટુ બી બોર્ન એઝ એનિમલ્સ હેવેલી બીઇંગ્સ જાતિ વિચ સ્પીશીઝ વિચ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ બોડી એમ આર ગોઇંગ ટુ ગેટ અ સ્ટ્રોંગ બોડી એમ આર ગોઇંગ ટુ ગેટ અ ડિફોમ બોડી એમ આર ગોઇંગ ટુ ગેટ અ એબલ બોડી ડિસેબલ બોડી સો મેની ડિફરન્ટ નામ કર્મ આર એક્ચ્યુઅલ ધ હાઈએસ્ટ નંબર ઓફ કેટેગરીઝ ઇન ધ ઇન ધ કાર્મિક uh look so 93 different sub categories of nam karma affecting this that another that whole what determines uh, the, the body gotra karma now this is also quite interesting when you look at gotra gotra essentially means status and in fact when i was preparing the slide i was thinking that jainism does not believe in any status right now so we don't believe in kk oh who brahmin caste no chuke who jain no caste no chuke jainism is one of that philosophies which does not believe so gotra essentially means that ઉચ્ચ સો વેન વેન લુક એટ ધ ક્લાસિફિકેશન ઓફ ગોત્ર ઇટ્સ ઉચ્ચ ગોત્ર એન્ડ નીચ ગોત્ર સો સુપિરિયર સોર્ટ ઓફ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ ક્લાસ સ્ટેટસ એન્ડ એન ઇન્ફિરિયર સ્ટેટસ ધીસ ડઝ નોટ મીન કે વોટ કાસ્ટ આઈ બીન બોન ઇન ટુ ગોત્ર એસેન્શિયલી મીન્સ ધેટ સમથિંગ વિચ ઇઝ નોટ બી કોન્ડ્યુસિવ ફોર ધ માય સ્પિરિચ્યુઅલ ગ્રોથ આઈ મીન બોન ઇન સચ અ એન્વાયરમેન્ટ ધેટ ધ સ્ટેટસ ઇઝ સચ ધેટ એન્ડ મોસ્ટ ઓફ અસ કેન બી ક્વાઇટ લકી we have actually got a good family structure we have got well we got shelter over here there are so many basic things which we've all got that we don't have to worry about our basic people suffering in syria and all the other places that we can now focus our energies to look about our soul so that means that the gotra we are actually in a nice gotra and it, it does not mean into status ke oh hu atena ame to jains ma born thya chhe ne tame to hindus chhe ne tame a chhe so there is no caste system which we believe in so the gotra is something which is an environment conducive for spiritual growth and if i'm in body in a niche gotra which means that the factors are just not conducive for my spiritual growth i'm i'm just suffering so much i don't have food to eat this environment is not conducive that i can't even think about my 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 spiritual growth vainya karma pain producing ayushya karma common perception of life span is age but a lot of people say ah tomar ayushya ke klu oh he died at the age of 90 95 jains don't believe in terms of age they don't sort of say yeah, age our life span is determined by the number of breaths we take swas so that essentially it's so jains have got a different perspective okay i uh, and that's why it's actually said i mean i don't have a slide here but there was another slide i looked into it when i was researching this if you look at the dog dog pants very much <laughs> so ilakon life span is much much uh, uh, lower if you look at uh, uh, some uh, some other animals whose actual breathing rate is much lower then the life span is much higher and if you look at it our scripts ma likhu che ke apna amuk devlok che who are angels they sometimes would take say one breath in two weeks one month two months so the lower the breath you have the much bigger the your life span so apna apne ke apna devlok che ke matlab life span is is much higher so essentially there is that correlation between the breaths and and and, and uh, the life span this is again in a very complex uh, theory i'm not an expert in it but it says ke this is the only karma that is bound in in a lifetime so apne ayushya karma je che it is written in the scriptures that we bind this karma when one third of our life is remaining so this ayushya karma will bind for the next life okay how much is going to be my life span in my next life is going to be determined when one third of my life is remaining so i do not know when one third if i was going to live until the age of 90 uh, 90 then uh, uh, so two thirds are gone so one third so 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 30 years remaining of my life that then i'll be that's the time when my life span for the next but it's going to be determined there were, again i'm not an expert in this matter but sometimes what happens is that what happens if someone meets with an untimely death an accident take a car no if that happens then whatever the time remaining is remaining again within that one third period uh, uh, that's when the the ayushya karma is actually bound for for the next life
Yeah, it is true, and, and that's the reason why, if you look at it, this concept is, I mean, we Jains believe in this concept, which that means, if our life is always going to be within spirit, within spirituality, it doesn't matter when that one third life is, okay, what's my disposition when that time is, if I'm more than sud bhav maj hoi, that means I'm, I'm, I'm then glad that I now I've bound something in, in, in my next lifespan which uh, in, so, so the idea is that you want to minimize that fits of outburst of rage, uh, hatred if you can, because you do not know okay, imagine if, if that's your, your karma is bound in, in that stage then you're actually going to go into a much uh, inferior destiny so the idea is that if you can, that's why after Sadhu Maharaj che, look, apne ke apne samayik maa pade, apne samayik kare. Apne Sadhu Maharaj che, they don't do samayik, because their whole life is samayik. Apne, none of our sadhus and sadhvis, they don't have to sit in a samayik, 12 of the 14 minutes of the best year. They have now taken the vow, that I'm going to be in samayik for the life, for the end, until the end of my life. So, so you'll never hear any sadhus and sadhvis saying, I'm aje samayik na betach. Their life is samayik. We have to do, I've taken 48 minutes, now I'm going to be doing a samayik. But Sadhu Sadhis don't have to do Samai. So essentially, which means that they are in such a great disposition, and that's why we believe that uh, most of the times, or almost all the times, whenever any, any saint passes away, we are almost sure and guaranteed that they've now gone into a better life. Uh, better life. Does the karma is pre-programmed conditions of imminent conditions, information created by karma? Okay, so essentially when we transmigrate to the next life, essentially for all life forms, whether it's humans, animals, plants, anything, we believe that there are two things which accompany the soul, every single birth, until liberation. One is the karma sharir, so that's like a memory. Our soul has got this memory bank, random access memory, or RAM, or hard drive, so that memory is the karma. And the Tejas Sharir, which houses the soul during its Sharir, it's a power body. So Tejas Sharir and the uh, Karma Sharir always accompanies the soul until liberation. The soul moves from one point until my next location in, in a kind of single moment of time. And Jainism says that there are also, again, if you look at the Tvata Sutra, there are some very complex theories of how the soul moves from here until the next journey. It says it can make a maximum of three or four turns. So if you look at the Jain universe, it says if, if my soul is on earth, and if I try to take my birth in, the, in another dimension, the soul can go up. If it then meets an obstacle, then the soul will go in this direction, and then it can go in that direction. So it, it gives all these complex theories of how the soul can go, and in how many turns it, 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 it can, can go to its next destination. The other thing is, if you look at, uh, sort of again, science, distance is equal to speed times time. So if you look at speed, it's equal to distance divided by time. So if I say the distance, if I want to go from this part of the universe into some other universe, let's say, oh, oh, and billions and trillions of miles away, but then the time could be literally as not even one second, not even one millisecond, not even one nanosecond. It's one instant of time. And that instant of time is too small. In, in Jainism, it's called Samai. And that Samai cannot be quantified in scientific terms. It's not one millisecond, it's not one nanosecond. It's smaller, 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 such a sm small entity that it literally, it's not even the, the time it takes to blink your eye. So the smallest unit of time, in that time, one Samai month, your soul can your, your soul can go from here to the, to the other part of the universe, absolutely far away. So you can imagine that kind of speed, no, nothing impedes it. Now, soul and karma is a direct relationship. Exterior circumstances excite, interior circumstances affect the soul. As magnitude of purity increases, the effect of uh, exterior circumstances decreases. Environment is only a stimulant and not a doer. Effect near and dear can make, further cannot make. Karmas are near and dear, circumstances are distance. So what it's saying, other, we can say, our karma, certain things happen to me because of circumstances. Jainism says, Things have happened to me because of my karma. What is most closest to my, my, my soul is my karmas. Circumstances are a bit further apart. Circumstances can stimulate certain things occurring, but eventually the only reason for any cause and effect is because of karma. Everything happens because of this. So when we look at, this is actually a nice uh, diagram. Certain things happen because of different things. Time, God. 
cause and effect and because of can it, because of time kshetra swabhav purusha niyati and karma these are known as five concomitants so these are the factors which can cause certain things to happen for example um uh, apex seed naiku and this seed is going to give me mangoes will i get the mango straight away no there has to be a certain period of time which has to occur for the men for the for the men for the fruits to bear no matter what you do no matter what power even if, if donald trump no matter how power he is god there's no thing he can do to say that he cannot bypass effect of time uh kshetra certain things happen because of location when you go to the temple we actually automatically start getting a nice bhav and if you automatically if you went into a pub or a discotheque the, the environment is such that your thoughts are not going to be that conducive so how if you have a uh, for example uh, uh, oil which is uh, which which a particular oil apne karta hai che it's olive oil so an olive seed will only give you olive oil you cannot get uh, uh, some other oil from an olive seed so in a nature che our nature is to give this i cannot give something else purushat then again through i can make cause and effect again to purushat niyati is universal law so niyati is that one part which jainism believes in destiny ke je thavano chi thavano che that's only that small part apne nikachik karma bainda hoy that means no matter what you do that effect is going to occur so those are the nikachik karmas karma one step further rise of karma karma is not like independently factors influencing the function of karmas dravya kshetra kal and bhav this is again a very uh, complex topic but it says that uh, there are different things which affect the karma dravya is substance and bhav is the modes kal and kshetra and again as i said uh, because in the interest of time i just got a few more slides to finish but this will be getting in look at it a bit later So let's just look at this quite very quickly. Call time has created world. Time is God. Mahabharat says time is the cause of all happiness and sorrow. Time is the only cause for the life processes. What Jainism says is that when we when you look at this 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 five uh, entities, you cannot just pick one thing up and say ah, ane sabet ah cause and effect thay lagech. Everything works in unison. It's not a single factor. Time is the only cause for all life processes. Jain refute. Even with favorable time, there is no rain. So time cannot be the only factor, only factor for all life processes. In the same way, space cannot be the only factor for certain things to happen or not to happen. Same thing with nature and purusha. No, actually, but effort करो चु, इतने अमाने effort अमाने effect आवन होते हैं. No, because there could be other factors in current the the. the, the environment might not be true. The time might not be right. In spite of all your efforts, you're still not getting the fruits. Okay, this is quite interesting to know, and I think it's very deep level. Jainism says there are ten st states of karma. Ban. So karma comes; they are bound to the soul. So that's ban. Udvartan, augmentation, which is duration and intensity. When a karma has been bound to the soul, you could do certain activities. We can, you can actually augment the duration and intensity. So I'm asking karma kira. If you then, for, for example. Uh, I mean, this is not a classic example. This is something which came to my mind when the 9/11 uh, terrorist attack happened. Uh, I, I saw on TV there were people in the Arab Arab world actually rejoicing. Ah, great! Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, this 9/11 terrorist attack. So people, you look at people who think they never knew these things happened, but just watching on TV that some people are in pain and they were actually supporting those people, they were actually rejoicing. So they are actually for for almost for a particular. purposeless senseless they are just binding the karma just out of rejoice so they are actually duration so you could be engage in certain activities and those activities actually augment the duration of intensity mara karma be mind that it was just going to be this much intensity and only for this much time period but i've now done certain things that i'll get now this much more intensity and for a longer period so originally when you bound it was only this much and this much intensity but you did certain things in the course of the period before the the uday maiva and which now is augmenting the the duration and intensity of karma the opposite upward attenuation 
So the canvas has been bound to give you this much of pain or pleasure and for this long, but you now could do certain activities to then say, ah, now I should just get this much pain, it's much slower and for a shorter time period. So you can increase and you can decrease. Sata existence. Time between non-friction and persistence. Sat. Sat essentially means when the karma has been bound to my soul, they, it's like a seed. The karmas are not going to give, give effect straight away. They're going to be in the gestation period, the latent period. In that, then that is the whole essence of spirituality. When karmas have been bound, they are not giving you the effect right now. And you could be doing activities, uh, tap and all these things, in nirjira, hok, thai, sakyanati. Uday is realization. Again, it's very interesting. Uday can be pradesh uday or vipak uday. So uday means that the karmas are rising to give its fruits. Pradesh uday, karma shed without bringing apparent tangible fruits. So amas uday, the karmas have to have risen up. The karmas are rising, but we do not even understand kya karma avidya and jatar pantriya. How, how can that be possible? The karmas have risen. For example, you could be sleeping and you, you have a dream. In that dream, either you experience intense pain or you experienced immense joy. But those karmas came, affected you, the, the soul, and I've been in Jatar Pandya. When you wake up, you didn't even realize that that happened. So, karma shed without bringing apparent or tangible fruits. I've been in Jatar Pandya. That's kind of halka, halka karma. Che. They are quite like karmas. They came and then they've gone away. Vipakudai, these are the fruition of karmas which can be experienced outwardly. We understand Omana Dukhe Che, Aathai Che. So, those are the karmas which can be experienced. The other karmas, They've come in, but without giving you any uh, sort of tangible, uh, it's just the vibrations of the soul, but you did not actually experience them. So again, the Uday can be true, Pradesh Uday or Vipak Uday. Udiran, premature realization. If something was on give me effect here, I want to bring them forward. Let it give me effect right now. Samkran, transference, quite, quite important. Samkraman. Mutual transformation of the subtypes belonging to the same genus except Ayushya and Mohinya. It's amazing karma. I found a karma which is going to give me pain. And then that pain karmas through some efforts can actually be transformed into saying, ah, now you should give me pleasure. That same karma, so you have literally just transformed, it's like a bipolar, something which is a, a battery which is negative, and then you just literally turn it all the rounds, now become po po a positive charge. So you could be, and what happens here is that it has to be in the some, some, same category. You can't say that Darshina Mohenia Matya, let me transform into uh, Gana Mohenia. For the same subtype, so our uh, Akarma Che, these are the different categories. Within those categories, I can then change the effect. So for a classic example is the Vedniya Karma. So Vedniya Karma, something which is going to give me pain, that pain can be transformed into giving me pleasure, and the other way around, something which is going to give me pleasure can then be turned into giving me pain. Transference. So mutual transformation of the subtypes belonging to the same genus except Ayushya and Mohinya. So Ayushya cannot be cannot be changed. You cannot say, oh, manatena narak gati ma jau, dhavam devlok ma jau, ke animal ma tenia jau. So those transference cannot occur within within those two, Mohinya and Ayushya. In everything else, you can actually uh, go. So for Gnana Varanya Karma, Amok Karma is our search, it was going to give you knowledge. But then you did certain activities, and that's why after Gani Market Chokra, please respect your uh, writing materials. Don't put your foot on your paper, pen. So start respecting things. So if something was going to give you knowledge, and you start being disrespectful, you now start not getting the knowledge. It's going to hinder hinder that. So you can transfer transfer the uh, some karma. Upsham. Upsham is also very interesting. Upsham is like a spring. Karmas je and avanash effect, you put like a spring, it's not going to give effect right now. And which is important, so for example, Vedya Karma, something which is going to give you lots of happiness or lots of pain. If those, if something was going to give you lots of pain, they have been suppressed. So now you're not getting that lots of pain. You can now do lots of spiritual activities and you can do other things. So just by that pure process of having the subsidence is very important. And, and, and the word which is used in uh, uh, scriptures ma shayopsham. So Karma maso take a shy option. Shy means destruction, and if you can't destroy, then certain karmas actually can be put like a spring. They will come back up certain times, they will spring back up, but whilst they are actually suppressed like a spring, you can do so many other activities. Need the thinking capability of all these processes except augmentation and attenuation. So these are all rules, the rules given in the scriptures what can happen, can't happen. Nikachit, that nothing happens. None of these, I cannot transfer, I cannot increase, I cannot decrease, nothing happens. Nikachit, Kama, Vivayankara, those are be all, end all. You have to just uh, 
એની ઇફેક્ટ તમે બાઇન્ડ કર્યું છે નો નથિંગ કેન હેપન ઇવન તીર્થંકર કે નોટ સે કે ચાલો હું તમને આશીર્વાદ આપું છું ધીસ કર્મસ કેન બી નિકાચિત કર્મસ આર નિકાચિત કર્મસ ઇવન તીર્થંકર સેમસેલ્વ્સ ઇફ ધે બાઇન્ડ ધીસ કર્મસ ધે હેવ ટુ ઇટ્સ ગો ગો થ્રુ ધીસ સો નથિંગ હેપન આઈ કેન ચેન્જ ધેમ આઈ કેન ડુ ટોક આઈ કેન ડુ એનીથિંગ ટુ સે કે ચાલો આ કર્મ હું હવે અનલિફાઈ કરું બંધ સત્ય ઉદય બંધ એટ્રેક્શન ઓફ ફાર્મિક મેટર ફ્રોમ સ્પેસ એક્સક્યુઝ મી સત પીરિયડ ઓફ ફાર્મિક ઇનેક્ટિવિટી ઉદય વેન ધે કમ ટુ રાઇઝ ઉદીરણ ઇન મોક્ષમ પ્રોસેસ ઓફ નોન ફ્રિશન ઉદીરણ મીન્સ પ્રીમેચ્યોર ફ્રિશન ઓફ કર્મ થ્રુ સ્ટ્રોંગ એફર્ટ્સ ઉદીરણ મોક્ષમ મીન્સ સબસિડન્સ ઓર ટેમ્પરરી નોન ફ્રિશન લાઈક અ સ્પ્રિંગ ક્લિયર ડેથ વેન ટાઇમ્સ આર બેટર ઇટ્સ ઓલમોસ્ટ લાઈક ધેટ ક્લિયર માય ડેથ અ ધેન વેન ટાઇમ્સ આર કન્ડ્યુસિવ લેટ મી ક્લિયર ઓલ માય ડેથ્સ સંક્રમણ ઉદ્ધવર્તન અપવર્તન અને નિકાચિત સંક્રમણ સો નેબલ ટુ ચેન્જ ધ નેચર ઇન્ટેન્સિટી એન્ડ ન્યુમેરિકલ સ્ટ્રેન્થ ઓફ બાઉન્ડેડ કર્મ ઉદ્ધવર્તન મીન્સ ઇન્ક્રીઝ અપવર્તન મીન્સ ડિક્રીઝ રિલેક્ઝેશન એન્ડ નિકાચિત મીન્સ નથિંગ ઇઝ પોસિબલ જસ્ટ હેવ ટુ બેર ધેમ So this is just it when karmas have actually been bound there is a period of non activity and that's a time ka jab karma ho bandh jata hai when they're not giving that uday maji aiva nahi that's a period where by we can we can do so gani vakya che hu old age ma tha so that religion karish but how do we know in old age ke we'll have the proper body we'll have the good health and i'll be able to do spiritual activity that's a kind of a very common uh, uh, phrase i've heard when such a oh yeah at the time is khai pe maza karo but jare apne old tha so there that's a time to do religion but who knows okay you going to have that kind of energy the, the intention so the idea is whilst things are conducive for you make the most of it if every karma bound had to be born then there would be no liberation so the whole science is kapu do je explain ke i can increase i can decrease it gives you glimmer of hope okay, okay we can do certain things in our life we have got the control that to to make changes in our life because if otherwise if this is if, if it was a fatalistic uh uh karma was fatalistic karma bainda che that said nothing can be done then then be no liberation because the amount of things given nothing can be done but this gives a glimmer of hope it's outlined in so many things in karma matama ke kabdu kari sako you can increase you can decrease you can change um doctrine of karma deals with the laws of nature this is a very classic example of mr lee uh lee better let better he was in india and then he was into very much into the uh, what is it the transcendental society how correct was mr let better when he said the way in which the indians approach the subject and the way in which their books are written are somewhat the reverse of ours they always descend upon it from the above as it were and the great wish is skimming out the whole plan of the universe save it the calm certainty of knowledge this is must be thus it must be we on the other hand approach the subject from below and patiently get to fact after fact over and again venturing to draw a deductions only after comparing the results of varied and repeated experiments and observations that scientific thought but the point which i think should be of interest to you in india is that although the observations are made from so different a direction the results agree precisely with the statements of your ancient books thus offering a corroboration of the religious teachings which ought specially to appeal to the younger generation because it comes along the very line in which that thought has been trained the line of scientific inquiry so in a way he's been very very uh, uh, supportive of kind of the indian uh, way of thought you come from the above this is what's been said in the scriptures eventually science will catch up to what has been said right you might have to stop there obviously huh? you might have to stop okay yeah just uh, that's it conclusion okay and that's right the signal thing uh yeah i think that's just the conclusion yeah that's it all right thank you right thank you thank you